Dwarf seven. Dwarf seven. Jason, you are the huntsman, dwarf number two, and dwarf number five. Vanessa, you get to be the evil queen. Hey. And Greg, you are the prince, dwarf two, and dwarf five. Now, because this is not quite difficult enough, Bill, yeah. the narrator has quite a few lines of dialogue here. I would like each one of them in a different voice. Okay. <laughs> we will accept celebrity impressions, if you would like. I'm going to give them a moment to, 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 to mark their scripts, and while they're doing it, I'm going to do a commercial for another panel. Uh, there's probably a few people in this room who are interested in careers in cartoon voices. I thought they would like, like to do it someday. We used to, in these panels, talk about that a lot, but it, it didn't work to talk about serious stuff and entertainment at the same time. So we've carved out a separate panel. It will occur this afternoon at 3 o'clock, it'll be, and they give you more time than they usually have, it's an hour and a half, in room 25 ABC, which is on the other side of the sales area outside. I don't know which one we're facing now. And it's going to be called The Business of Cartoon Voices. I'm going to have a couple of top agents in the business there, I'm going to have a couple of uh, voice people. Uh, Wally Wingard is going to join us. Chuck's going to be there. And Vanessa's going to be there. And we're going to talk to you about agents, demos, the, 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 the nuts and bolts of the business. There are a lot of very, very fine, honest, helpful voice coaches out there these days. Bill and Greg, I know both are both coaching now. And you could do, if you want to be a, if you want a career, you should get with someone like that. There's also a lot of predatory ones who charge you an awful lot of money for not doing much for you. We'll take your money before you're ready to make a demo. We will promise you that you can, you can that you too can be so big that like Frank Welker, you don't have to come to my panel. And uh, <laughs> we, we're, this is a free thing to impart some basic information so that we can feel like we've done something to stop people from being ripped off or getting pointed in the wrong direction. That's 3 o'clock in 25 ABC. See, we do, I do the panels that don't try to sell you anything. We give you stuff. So anyway, are you all ready, folks, here? Ready. Uh, okay. Yeah. Have you found all your roles there? Yeah. yeah, you got one above that. No, yeah. You're that. All right? All right. Now, uh, Chuck and Bill, I know, did not see what we did yet. The other people did yesterday. Greg had to leave before us. He didn't see it. Uh, Jason, did you, you didn't see the uh, yesterday's, did you? Maybe. Oh, okay, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But anyway, note if you if you want to if you were here for yesterday, compare these. This would be completely different. Uh, folks, do whatever voice you want. If I decide that you're in the wrong direction, I may stop you and have you change to a different voice. But that you, yesterday was really not necessary. You'll notice. Uh, and. Uh, We're already. This is the story of Snow White. We will start with Mr. Farmer. Once upon a time, long, long ago, there was an evil queen who studied dark magic. She was very vain, and each day she would go to her magic mirror and ask the same question. Magic mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? <laughs> And each time the mirror would give her the same reply. Reply. Now this pleased the queen greatly, as she knew that a magical mirror could speak not but the truth. And one day, the answer changed. Magic mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? You are fair, it is true. But Snow White is even fairer than women of the world. Are you drowning? For crap! <laughs> How dare she! Snow White was her stepdaughter. <laughs> Alas, of extraordinary beauty that had recently blossomed. Oh my god, that is so sweet. Thank you so much. <laughs> what is wrong, stepmother? 
mother dear. <laughs> Nothing, Snow White dear. Run along and do your chores. Okay. <laughs> she, uh, she summoned her huntsman to the royal chambers and, uh, and gave him an order. <laughs> Take Snow White into the forest and kill her. Um, your majesty, I, uh, what? I, I just can't do such a thing. You are tedious. You will follow my orders, huntsman. And you will bring me her heart as proof you have complied. That's intense. <laughs> Still beating, please. The huntsman took Snow White into the forest as ordered and managed to draw his knife before his conscience seized control. <laughs> Yeah. Who's been All seven of them. 